I'm Tato Cat and welcome to my channel. And today we are playing Ace Academy. Previously, we are having a spa day. We go and tour some gardens. We have a little moment with Mayu and um, we go to the hot springs. Akita is there for some reason. I don't know because he's Akita and he's a stalker and he loves us. And um, people and all the girls and show got caught maybe and now we're kind of dealing with the effects of that. Um, it was less fan service than I thought it would be, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's continue. I'm just going to stop you right there. But I was just getting to the good part. Show, this is what got you in trouble in the first place. That's a pretty tame revenge as for... As far as revenge go, revenges go, though. I suppose that's true. We wait a while longer before the girls finally appear. Coyote glowers at us as she marches over. Valerie and Yuna both look grave, and even Mayu looks stern. She'll leans over to me. God, they know. Should we just tell them? Keep cool. The girls finally pause in front of us. Um, are you okay? Cody glares at the two of us and crosses her arms. Of course not. We are surrounded by perverts. Cho's eyes widen in panic, and even I'm beginning to feel anxious. I was just teasing him before, but maybe they really did see us. I feel like if it was us, Coyote would just have would have ran and like, you know drop kicked us so I assume that she doesn't know it's us try to play it off it was all show's fault come clean we're gonna try to play it off oh really did something happen we were being spied on while we were relaxing in the hot springs huh Th that's terrible who would do such a thing <laughs> Show, shut up. You're going to blow a cover. <laughs> you're going to blow it. We're doing so well. But you're going to say something dumb. I just know it. Show's voice is slightly higher pitched than normal. I glance at him and he tries to motion for him to... And try to motion for him to calm down. He'll blow our cover <laughs> otherwise. I don't know, but I intend to find out. It was Akira. Okay, to be fair, we could not have done it if Akira didn't show us the way. Kaori scans the lobby, looking for perverts, I assume. She relax show relaxes. Maybe you should just let it go. Show? Not helping, bro. What? How can you suggest that? And let them get away with a free show? That's not right! Sho and I instinctively take a step back from their indignation. Did you see who was watching you? No. Yeah, we'll kick their ass. <laughs> then how are you going to find them? The girls fall silent. We'll just know! Cowdy. Really? You just gonna attack her? And never mind, it's her. She would do that. I raise an eyebrow and cross my arms. Are you sure you are even being watched? Sho catches my eye. As is to say, Good one, brosiv. Yes! How can you be sure if you didn't see any anyone? Cody falters and looks at the rest of the girls. 
Look, look at the rest of the girls for backup. There was a pebble that rolled into the water from an outcrop of rocks. It's the perfect place for someone to hide and peep. Or maybe it was an animal. An animal? I mean, it is an outdoor hot springs. Yeah, the springs are outside. It's kind of hard to stop all the wildlife from running about. I suppose it's possible. To be a pervy raccoon. She looks uncertain. Uh, she looks uncertainly at Cowdy. Or it could have been a person. Those rocks were a little too conveniently placed to have just been a careless animal. My you nods. We told the hotel manager about it too. So now they're aware and also on the lookout. Shell seems worried again. But after listening to his conversation, after listening to this conversation, I'm convinced they have no way of finding out it was us. Okay, well, since you've already alerted the hotel, maybe we should let them investigate and find the people, the peeper, and we can just enjoy our dinner. You know, not. That's probably the best course of action. Thank God I'm starving. Do you ever not think about food? I haven't eaten since lunch. I think I'm allowed to be hungry. My you could go. <laughs> Let's go before you faint from hunger. I hope the food is good. Me too. And there's nothing worse than staying in a nice hotel. And the food sucks. <laughs> the tension lifts as we walk towards the dining room. I was too close for comfort. When we arrive at the dining hall, we sit down. We settle down at our table. Until the hotel offers a Freaks Fix menu. So all we have to do was confirm our number of Din of diners then the waitress put in the orders for our meals whatever happened to May she didn't want to stay after the incident so she went to find her teammates damn it Satsuma how did you know May was there? Oh, never mind. You talked to Akira. That's going to be your story, I assume. I wonder if she ever got a chance to finish the explanation. Okay, so they're not going to bring that up. So... <laughs> Kaori, you're not going to jump on us for, not know for somehow knowing May was there, even though we are pretending that we didn't snoop? Soon the food arrives. It's a simple tray of rice, fish, and pickled vegetables. We quiet down as we all dig in. I hadn't realized how hungry I was until now. I feel a buzz in my pocket. As I pull out my phone, I notice all of my teammates are checking their phones too. It's a group email from Dashu. They're reminding us about our coaching session that was scheduled for tomorrow. And it seems they've received confirmation that Coach Ivan will be on campus to give us a few pointers before our match on Thursday. You know where's a broad grin. Did you all get that email? Yeah. I'm so glad Coach Ivan will be on campus. I don't know who that is. Me too. Oh, he's one of my idols. Apparently he's awesome. Really? 
Of course! He's a war game legend! How come I've never heard of him before? Okay, so Satsuma also doesn't know who this He's is. He's almost as famous as the Akamis. Show looks thoughtful. Actually, Mayu, doesn't your family know him? Yes, but not very well. They respect each other, of course, but aren't close friends. That's why I've never met him. I'm looking forward to what he can teach this team. There's a reason why he's won three championships and received the MVP award twice. Wow, this guy sounds impressive. I heard no matter where he goes, he always wears his signature helmet. Valerie. Valerie's heard of him too? Huh, I've heard that too. I wonder if he'll wear it tomorrow. Probably. Is this guy gonna be really weird? The team continues to talk ex excitedly about tomorrow's training session. I soak in each story or rumor the team shares about him. And the more I hear about it, and more about him, the more enthusiastic I feel about meeting him. After we finish up our meals, I want to take another dip into the hot spring. After all, my first session was kind of interrupted. She happily agrees, but the girls firmly refuse. They say their goodnights and return to their rooms. Sho and I relax in the hot water until we're both stifling yawns. Then we decide to return to our rooms as well. After all, we have an early morning train to catch. I'm exhausted and collapse onto my bed. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I fall asleep. I'm waking up at the crack of dawn by the most irritating clucking noises. Apparently, Shell's alarm is a rooster crowing. Bruh, why? I want to hear that alarm. Just cuz. After unceremoniously stifling a yawn and getting dressed, I make a quick sweep of the room to make sure I packed all of my things. Sho had to make two sweeps because he kept yawning during his first and forgetting where he'd already looked. Such a show thing. We're all silent as we meet in the lobby. Mayu and Kaori are both wide awake and as perky as either of them could ever be. Yuna and Valerie seem even more exhausted than Sho and I. I wonder what was going on in their room. Before my mind can wander too far, I snap back to reality and glance guiltily at Kaori, who has her eyes narrowed. Can she read my thoughts now too? Good thing I wasn't thinking anything perverted. Yet. Yet. You were going to. Still in silence, we make our way to the train station. What sounds a tad airplane-ish. The trains, the train ride 
home feels even longer than the ride to the hot springs. I resist the urge to ask, are we there yet? After what feels like an eternity, we arrive at Isukaze. Initially, oh, finally, there we go, finally! Napping on the uncomfortable train was nearly impossible, and my thoughts kept drifting to my warm bed. I say a quick goodbye to everyone and practically speed home. As soon as I arrive, I make a beeline for my room and close and collapse onto my bed. Bright sunlight shines on my face and I slowly blink my eyes open. Then I jolt upright in bed. What time is it? Did I miss the coaching session? I fumble around looking for my clock, but it's only 11 a.m. Coach Ivan won't arrive until mid-afternoon. I have plenty of time. In that case, I wonder if anyone is free. Show Yuna. We haven't hung out with Yuna too much. But I kind of want to hang out with Show. See how him and his lady friend are doing. We'll hang out with Yuna next time. Just as I decide what I want to do, I get up. I get a phone call from Show. What's up, Brosif? No. Jeez. I pull the phone away from my ear. What do you mean, no? You can't call me Brosif. Brosif is your name, Brosif. Uh. Okay. What's up? What are you doing this fine evening? I don't have any specific plans. Excellent. I'll meet you at the Izokaze Park. What's going on at the park? You'll see. See you in a few. He hangs up before I can pry for more. Well, whatever it is, if shows excited, it has to, it has got to be fun. I hop on my bike and drive to the park. tantalizing sense of food waft towards the street enticing passerby pa passersby there we go as I search for the for a parking space the park is illuminated with hanging lanterns and packed full of stalls is this some type of festival Yes, look at all the stalls. Show lingers on the outskirts of the park and runs over to me. There you are, Brosif! What's all this? It's a festival, of course! Yeah, but which one? He looks incredulous. Jeez, you don't know? No. Should I? Of course! Everyone knows it's the Festival of Dongos! Aw, Dongo Festival. You have no idea, do you? I just told you. They sell all kinds of Dongo here. So you assume it's a Festival of Dongos because there's lots of different Dongo stalls? But why is there even a festival where they can sell Dongo? He blinks. Does it matter? Now come on! Wait. Are we going to wait for the others? 
Nitro scratches the back of his head. This might just be a two-man operation. Sounds good to me. You have a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, how does Sho feel about that? I thought there would be a thing, you know, with Sho being like, you're dating my bestie sort of thing. But are we his bestie? Are we Sho's bestie now? But we're dating his childhood friend. You know, I thought there would be a scene about that, but apparently there's not. Do they even know that we're dating Mayu? Okay. I have a girlfriend. Um, excuse me. I have a girlfriend. Sho shakes his head. And she won't let you hang out with your guy friends? That's a shame. I didn't think you'd get whipped so quickly. Hey, I didn't say that. You certainly implied it. I have a girlfriend too, remember? You don't see shackles on me. Okay, fine. Fine then. Fine then. What happens if I say this? This I know might just be a two-man operation. I know this choice doesn't matter, but I just want to say, you have a girlfriend. Uh, wouldn't you have preferred going with your... You know. You tell me? You're joking, right? It's reading week. She has me constantly studying and studying only. It's like being on house arrest, man. I barely managed to escape. He waves his arms around for embellish, for emphasis. I mean, what she's doing isn't necessarily bad. I know, but sometimes it's good to just recharge the mental battery, you know? I figured the others would get on my case, but I can trust you, Brosif. <laughs> That's his reason. It's like being on house or you're j Alright. Yes. Sounds good to me. We'll do all three, I nod. Just us guys? I'm game. Then let's get started! The adventures of Brosif and Show I nod. Show seems to be in an extra good mood. We enter the throng of people and browns the different stalls. This area sells all sorts of crafts and clothing. Are they dongo related clothing? A small doll dressed in a fitted kimono catches my, my attention. I stop. Show and I inspect it. For I stop, show, and inspect it further. The wooden doll has hair as black as night and a dainty face with blushing cheeks and red lips. Maybe Mayu would like this. Buy it. Don't buy it. Buy it. <laughs> yeah, she might like it. How much for this? The vendor names his price, and I pay. Show cautiously watches the transaction. Interesting choice. Is that a new thing you're into? It's a souvenir for my girlfriend. Show's eyes go wide. What? You can't go buying souvenirs? Why not? Because now I'll have to buy one too! Sure, you can get one too. Oh, not this. I can't get the same one as you. She might find out and then she'd be upset. Okay, then we'll look for something else. Ready for some food? Always. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> that conversation went nowhere, really. We'll get something else. Want food? <laughs> Getting her food as a souvenir. We move away from the crafts area and straight into the sea of small eats. Show can't decide on what to order to what to order to. Okay. 
um, what to order to ends up ordering one of each item. His arms are full of more dongo than one man can carry, than one man can eat. I managed to stop him before he applies the same tactic to each vendor and convince him to eat what we have first. We sit down along the edge of the park at the picnic tables. As we settle in, a seat of twins, a set of twins approaches us. Hey boys, are these seats taken? Oh my, they're using the sexy voice. Attractive female one. Although their faces are nearly identical, one girl has six straight hair, which flows in glossy waterfall in a glossy waterfall down her back and ends right about her ample bottom. You had to say it like that. The second girl plays with her curls and lets them bounce between her full her full bosom uh they flash a smiles revealing cute dimples then sit across from us and set down their drinks okay we didn't say yes girls with no actual pictures it's really nice of you to save the seeds oh they sound completely different I mean, I assume they would. But I thought they would both have, like, this sexy voice. They seem to be around our age. The girls look at Sho with interest as they play with the straws in their drinks. Do you go to Ace? Considering Ace is the only university around here, it's not an unusual question. Um... He seems dazed. Yeah, he's in the pilot program. Pilots? Show not still as confused as before. He shoots me a questioning glances as if unsure whether or not he's Actually, this is whether or not this is actually happening. He is so out of his element. The girls look at each other, then giggle. What are you doing after the festival? Show's eyes widen, and he looks at me in astonishment. He looks like he's about to agree. When he quickly shakes his head. Actually, we have plans with our girlfriends later tonight. Aww, really? Show nods, although more reluctantly this time. Both of you are already taken? Oh well. Good job, Show. Shrugging, she scribbles something on a napkin and tucks it into Show's hand. Her fingers lingering on show as she leans closer and speaks in a breathy voice. Well, if you guys ever want to hang out, I'm sure we'll be available. They slowly return to their feet and purposely give us an eyeful of their chest. As they walk away, they exaggerate the hypnotic sway of their hips. What just happened? They were just being nice. 
The magic of not being single. No idea. The magic of not being single. <laughs> you don't know? Shoho looks at me with intrigue. Well, uh... We'll explain the magic of not being single in the next episode. And Tato Cat, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.